Hollywood Radio Theater. Gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Irving Cummings. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight we welcome back from her recent trip abroad one of those rare combinations of Hollywood. A versatile actress, a beautiful woman, a glamorous personality. Claudette Colbert. We will present Miss Colbert in her original role in an exciting mystery drama, Thunder on the Hill. Produced by Universal International Pictures. And also from that studio, we have invited one of their newest, brightest stars, Barbara Rush. Now, Thunder on the Hill, starring Claudette Colbert as Sister Mary and Barbara Rush as Valerie Kahn. Thunder on the Hill. For two weeks now, the rain had beat down ceaselessly. Below us in the little valley, the dread warning spread across the southern countryside. Blood. For the villagers, there was only one refuge, the convent and hospital of Our Lady of Reims. As Mother Superior, I issued orders to open our doors to all who asked for shelter. Nurse Phillips, may I ask what you're doing here? There have been casualties, Sister Mary. We'll leave this recreation room with an annex to the hospital. I don't remember giving you permission to leave the ward. You didn't. But when everything's in a turmoil, I forget formalities. There is no turmoil here unless we create it, Nurse. Bring the cough here, Willie. Yes, miss. Sister Mary, Phillips asked my permission to leave the ward. Oh, I'm sorry, Dr. Jeffries, I didn't know. I plan to use this room for a children's dormitory. You see, I want them away from the contagion ward. And I was preparing it for Dr. Jeffrey's wife. Well, we'll find some other place. Your wife, Doctor? She know better? No, I'm afraid not. Mr. Harmer is bringing her up from the village. She'll be here any moment. I'll have a bed put up in my office. Please don't be offended. It's just that it's my duty to see that things are done in the right way. Why, of course. The right way, Sister Mary? Or your way? Please return to the ward, nurse. You resent anybody here with a will of her own. Maybe if I were a thieving half-wit like Willie, you'd approve of me. You're down on me, yard. I'll teach you calling me names. Willie! Willie, no, no! Even you say! Put it down, Willie! Put it down at once! Oh, Willie. My hands be clean, sister. They have no sin on them. Go to the kitchen. Sister Josephine needs help. Yes, sister. Oh, we're all a little jumpy tonight. I'm sure Nurse Phillips didn't mean what she said. I meant every word and more. What's happened here? What is it? I'm fed up, Reverend Mother. Sister Mary. It would do her so good to be wrong once in a while. If you weren't so positive about everything, perhaps your sister would still be alive. Oh, she doesn't mean it, sister. Doctor, Mr. Harmer and your wife have just arrived. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. Sister Mary, Willie's proved once more that he can't be trusted. He's a good workman, but as soon as conditions are back to normal, he must be sent away. Yes, Reverend Mother. Ah, you're preparing this room for the children. Yes, they'll be safer here, and they won't disturb the patient. To be sure. How well you plan everything. No. Nurse Phillips is furious with me. In fits of anger, sister, we all say things we don't really mean. But how she found out about your sister, I really... Phillips must have resented me for a long time. We can't expect to be loved by everyone. We've got to accept the fact that we're less than angels and make the best of ourselves. Reverend Mother, have I made the best of myself? Of course you have. And you came to us later in life than most of the others. Sometimes I think it was too late. It's never too late to serve God on the ailing. Your record is a glowing example of it. From novice to matron of our hospital in eight short years. Oh, if I could only be sure that in changing my life, I, I have succeeded in changing myself. You mustn't hold yourself responsible for what happened to your sister. I should have let her alone. If she wanted that man... I had no right to interfere. But he was altogether an unfit person for her. It was your duty to protect her. But I can't escape the thought that it was I who... Suicide is such a horrible sin. Oh, Mother, no matter how I tried, I, I find no comfort, no peace. It'll come to you, sister, in its own way, in its own time. Now then, how many do we have here? So far... 72 adults and 25 children, in addition to all our regulars. Sister, you're wanted in the great room. Is it urgent? A man and two women have arrived. 
They want to borrow some petrol or a car. Oh, thank you. I'll, I'll see them in a moment. These people, do you know them? No, Reverend Mother, but I heard some of the villagers talking. They said to bring her to a convent is blasphemy. Her? A young woman. The other woman and the man, are, I'm not certain, but they appear to be in charge of her, as if she were from, from the police. I see. Well, Sister Mary will take care of them. <laughs> Take off your coat, miss. It's so worried about my health, Mrs. Pierce. I only want you to be comfortable. We'll be back on the road soon. Good evening. I've brought you a chain. It's just soup, but it's hot and nourishing. Oh, I, I was told there were three of you. Sergeant Melling will be back in a moment. Now, here's your soup. Sit down, won't you? Thanks, but I don't want any soup. Please, it will warm you. I'm not cold. Then let me have your coat. Perhaps you don't care about getting ill, but we do. Why should you? Oh, for one thing, our wards are overcrowded. Oh, I want to get out of here. What's keeping him so long? Why are you in such a hurry? Oh, oh, but I'm not. They are. Well, isn't there anything I can do? Perhaps if you'd explain... Explain what? You know who I am. You're only being kind because it's your duty. Well, that's true. And if I can't be of any help, it only means I've failed in my work. A very clever sister. Appeal to the sinner's conscience, the trick that never fails. Well, with me it does, I have no conscience. Well, and I have no tricks left except to ask you once more. Take off your coat. Oh, right. I'll take it off. I don't want you to be a failure on my account. You'd make me even a greater success if you took your soup. Now, will you stop? Really, miss. There are times when I... Yes? When? Well, they've all been evacuated, I'm sure. But if there's anything we... Hello? Hello? Sister, I was just talking to the chief engineer at the dike. I was cut off. Will you ring through, please? What? Oh. Oh, thank you. Well, get ready, Pierce. They're giving us petrol. We'll be in Norwich in an hour. I'm afraid you can't. Oh, why not, ma'am? What is it, Sister Mary? The dike has been abandoned, Reverend Mother. They expect it to collapse at any moment. Oh, then if I may use your phone, I'll have Norwich send us a launch. I'm afraid you can't do that either. The wires are down. There's no way to communicate with the outside. But we must be in Norwich before tomorrow. That's impossible, Sergeant. Even if the rain stops, it'll be at least two or three days before... Two we... or three days? I couldn't stand it. Sister Mary, you'd better put the entire staff on emergency duty. They're bringing in more casualties from... Why, Valerie. Good evening, Dr. Jeffrey. How did you get here? Val... Valerie Carnes. That's right, sister. Valerie Carnes, the murderess. Valerie Carnes, who was on her way to Norwich Prison to be hanged in the morning. But now they'll just have to wait. <laughs> oh, can't you see it in the newspapers? Postponed because of rain. <laughs> just like a cricket match. All right, miss. Easy now. <laughs> Take her to my office. Put her on the couch. Don't leave her alone, Pierce. Not for a second. Among those now under our roof was Dr. Jeffrey's wife, Isabel. She'd been ailing for some weeks. A nervous disturbance. The doctor had set up makeshift quarters for her in his office. As for their meals, they would eat with Mr. Harmer, the pharmacist, in his dispensary. Oh, sit down, Isabel. Breakfast is getting cold. Where's Mr. Harmer? Oh, he'll be back in a moment. He's have... taking some drugs to the ward. Have you seen her again, Edward? Valerie? No. Not since last night. She's innocent. I swear she is. No, your voice and for heaven's sake be sensible. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, Harmer. Well, it's good to see you up and about, Mrs. Jeffreys. Thank you. Won't you sit down and join us? Oh, I had breakfast an hour ago, but I shan't refuse another cup of tea. Edward, please let me see her. It's impossible. She's under arrest. Oh, oh Sister Mary. Don't get up, Doctor. Good morning, Mrs. Jeffreys. I've brought the ward charts, but they can wait till you've had breakfast. Sister, please. Miss Khan, where is she? Where are they keeping her? She was moved to my quarters this morning. We decided it would be better if she were completely separated from the others. Yes, the villagers are so set against her. It's a pity. But after all, she did kill her own brother, wicked though he was. Did you know Jason Carnes, Mr. Harmer? Only slightly. Uh, Dr. Jeffries is the one who really knew him. What actually was the matter with him? A stroke. It left him almost completely paralyzed. A result of chronic alcoholism and an overall dissolute life. Uh, uh, Isabel, dear, if you don't eat, Sister Mary will think you don't like their cooking. Oh, but I, I, I do. It's excellent. Valerie Carr, I'll never forget the look in her eyes. And all I did was tell the truth. After all, it was I who filled the prescription. She poisoned him. Wasn't that the charge? She gave her brother three tablets, a fatal dose. Would have killed a horse. 
I'll wager she wasn't glad to see you here, Doctor. I'm afraid not. Why not? I was a key witness for the crown. You did everything you could to save her. You brought up all the extenuating circumstances. Oh, if only Willie hadn't ever heard. Willie? Our Willie? He used to help out at the Khan's house. Handyman. Just as he is here. What did he overhear? Well, Jason was in agonizing pain. When I got there, I found Valerie terribly distraught. She had no idea what she was saying. She kept repeating, I wish he were dead. Oh, Edward. <laughs> I'm sorry, dear. Yes, we were all shocked by it. A very tragic affair. You mean the court took Willie's evidence as testimony? No, not Willie's. Mine. I had to admit he was telling the truth. Oh. Oh. Well, the charge, Doctor. I'll leave them here with you. Hmm? Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sister. Come in. I, uh, I haven't had a chance yet to thank you for allowing us to use your rooms here. There's no need to thank me, Sergeant. I'll only be a moment. There's some papers in my desk. Who's playing? Miss Carnes, ma'am. Since you have a piano, well, I hope you don't mind. Oh, no, of course not. She plays beautifully. Tell me, has she been a difficult prisoner? Oh, not more than most, ma'am. Of course, these last days are the worst after the Home Secretary turned down the appeal. May I see her? These rooms are yours, sister. I have no right to stop you. Thank you. Oh, please don't stop. What do you want? I wanted to see if there's anything I can do to make you comfortable. It's cold here, isn't it? I'll have Willie bring some logs for the fireplace. How is Willie? Oh, I don't know. Unpredictable, as always. And just as frightened. He didn't look at me once during the trial. Just kept wiping his face. But I'm not angry with him. He only repeated what he heard. Miss Collins, that music you were playing a moment ago, I knew so little about music. Was it Debussy? No. It's Collins. You're a composer? Jason Collins. Your brother? Yes. The one I killed. You don't like it, do you? Oh, but I do. Oh, no, you don't. Poor Jason. All his life he had to contend with it. Well, you are wrong. Jason's music has great merit. It will be remembered. That's the only thing I still believe in. Miss Collins, is there nothing I can do to help you? Oh, but you have. You're sure you don't mind a murderess using your room? You didn't kill your brother. I'm sure you didn't. How very kind of you. That makes two of us. Even if you had done it out of some false sense of mercy, his death would be on your conscience, and you wouldn't find peace, not for a second. You had peace while you played. Why? Why do you think I'm not guilty? Tell me. Perhaps because I know how it feels to be guilty. Well, suppose you do believe in my innocence. What does that mean to me? Can you do something about it? I can pray for you. More words. Sister, if you really want me to believe you, help me to live through these last few days. Oh, I will. Bring me the human being who really cares about me. His, his name is Sidney Kingham. Is he here? No, no, North. Only eight short miles away. Oh, but you know it's impossible to get to knowledge. Well, you're a nun, a holy woman. Why don't you perform a miracle? Oh. I seem only to upset you, Miss Khan. Forgive me. Later that night, Sister Mary went to the kitchen. She wanted to talk to Sister Josephine. In the corner, Willie was eating his supper. Finish your supper and get some sleep, Willie. Tomorrow's another long day. Bye, sister. I go up soon. Sit down, sister. There's something on your mind, isn't there? You have that faraway look in your eyes. Is it still that unfortunate girl? Ever since last night, from the first moment I saw her, something passed between us. Sister Josephine, I know she's no more guilty of murder than, than you are. But you can't be so certain. I am, I am certain. It's as if I were. It's as if I were driven from within to do something. This great flood. It must have been God's will to surround our house with water. To let no one in and no one out. God's will it is. If I could only go to Norwich. To Norwich? I'd do anything if I could get there tonight. Well, that's the first foolish thing I've heard you say in eight years. Sister, I need your help. My help? I want to know everything about that trial. But how would I know? Those old newspapers you're always saving. It's simple waste to throw out newspapers. Why? I use them to line my shelves. I know, I know. That's why they must be here somewhere. Please, 
Won't you find every newspaper you can from last January when the trial was on? Sister Mary, is this why? I must know what more about it, please. Come then. We'll find the paper somewhere. Here's another one, sister. Listen. Listen to this. Prosecution. If no one else was in the house, who then but you could have given your brother the three tablets? Miss Carr, I told you a hundred times I took one tablet from the vial. I did not substitute the aspirin for the two missing tablets. I gave him one tablet, just one tablet. And here, down here, Mr. Harner's testimony. Now, if we can find the other... Oh, who's there? It'd be me, Willie. Oh. Come in. Willie, you're dripping wet. Uh, oh. I hear you talk, Sister Mary. So I come to fetch you. You be wishing to go to Norwich. And so you will. Norwich? Tonight? Willie found a way. Nobody could but Willie. Be you ready, sister? Yes, Willie. I'm ready. Come. We go to Norwich now. Make a friend and you make an ally. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. Take the famous all-Negro basketball team, the Harlem Globetrotters. As unofficial ambassadors, in one year they played ball before more than a million people on four continents. In Rio de Janeiro, they entertained crowds of from 30,000 to 50,000. During one summer, they toured Europe and Africa, chalking up another 600,000 fans. In 1952, they celebrated their 25th anniversary as a team by circling the globe. Yes, sir, the team organized by Abe Saperstein really gets around. And their exhibitions have been more than just a demonstration of American basketball. They've been a lot more. The team is a living example of American fair play and sportsmanship, in and out of uniform. Abe Saperstein now carries a letter which reads in part, The Harlem Globetrotters have proved themselves ambassadors of goodwill. On any future tours, please call on us for any help we can give. And the letter is signed by the United States State Department. In being ambassadors of fair play, the Harlem Globetrotters prove that by helping others, you help your country. And now our producer, Mr. Cummings. Act two of Thunder on the Hill, starring Claudette Colbert as Sister Mary and Barbara Rush as Valerie Kahn. Willie had found a rowboat. This was the means by which he takes Sister Mary to Norwich. It had stopped raining now. The floodwaters were heavy with mist in the park. But Willie never so much as paused at the oar. We'll be there soon, sister. The dike be right under us now. Crushed flat by the flood, it is. Willie, hmm? do you know a man named Sidney Kingham? Uh, aye, sister. Do you know where he lives? Uh, be he in Norwich this night. Willie finds him. Willie. Did Mr. Kingham come often to visit Miss Kahn? Not often. Mr. Jason, he hated him. Hated him? He was afeard Mr. Kingham be taking Miss Valerie away. Oh, he, he was a mean one, all right. Hurting others be his pleasure. Mr. Jason was a very sick man. He, he hurt me. Threw a, a jug at me, he did, and cut my head. Uh, I be bleeding like a pig. Well, why did he do that? He, he said my hands be picking and stealing. He be looking for some letter. But Willie didn't take the letter. Uh, not then. But you did take it later. Aye. After he cut me with the jug, I, I, I took it. Oh, Willie. He punishes Willie for picking. Well, Willie be picking. <laughs> What did you do with that letter? Uh, I uh, be hiding it in my room. Hiding it? Why? Do you know what it says? What it says? No. Uh, I just smell it every night before sleeping. Willie, when we get back to the convent, I want you to show me that letter. Aye. Aye, sister. Smells proper sweet, it do. Uh, lilac. Like lilac comes the springtime. <laughs> We be near the land, sister. Oh, this terrible fog. I can't see a thing. Stay close to Willie and be careful. 
Soon we be in Norwich proper. They were back at the convent shortly after dawn. With them was Sidney Kingham. Mrs. Pierce rushed at once for Sergeant Mellick. Oh, sister, you've been to Norwich? Yes, Sergeant. Well, of course, you notified the authorities there that were here. No. No, I didn't have it in mind. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, however, I'll have Willie, or whatever his name is, take us back immediately. I'm afraid that's impossible, Sergeant. As soon as we returned, Willie smashed the boat to pieces. Why didn't you stop him? He couldn't. Oh, this is Mr. Kingham, Sergeant. Kingham? Oh, yes, her fiancé. So that's why you went to Norwich. I'll have to advise my superiors about this. I have no choice. You must do your duty, Sergeant. It's my fault, sister. I never should have asked you. I knew what I was doing, Miss Khan. Now, if you'll excuse me, my place is in the ward. Oh, oh wait, please. I... I have a gift for you. Oh, we don't accept gifts. You did this for an innocent woman. I swear this to you. It's all I have. I make you a gift of it. My innocence. Dale Grant. I'll tell you. Good morning, Miss Phillips. So you're here. We've been looking all over for you for hours. Well, it's too late now. What is it? Mrs. Smithson's had her baby. She said you promised to be with her. Yes, yes, I did promise. What about her? And the baby? She's all right. But the baby's barely breathing. It's hopeless. Oh. But Dr. Jeffries is still trying. I'll see him at once. Just a minute. Most of the villagers are here, and they know all about you. How you had to go and bring that, that evil woman's lover back. Her pleasure meant more to you than poor Mrs. Smithson and her baby. If I were you, I'd keep away from the villagers. Thank you for warning me, Nestor. Tried everything, Sister Mary. Yes, the infant's alive, but how much longer, I can't say. Would you like me to take over, Doctor? Well, you must be twice as tired as I am. No, I'm not tired. Well, then do what you can. If you respond at all, try the oxygen again. I wish you'd spoken with me before you went to Norwich. I'm afraid you couldn't have changed my mind. You'll break your heart if you get involved in this Khan's affair. Well, call me if there's any sudden change. Yes. Oh, Doctor, how is your wife this morning? I really don't know. Sister Agatha said she's trying to help Mr. Harmer in the dispensary. I'll see her as soon as I check the other patient. I don't believe it, Nurse Phillips. I know the villagers. They'd never raise a finger against a holy woman. And I tell you, Mrs. Jeffries, that I saw them. Sister Mary went to relieve your husband. They tried to block her way. They shook their fists at her. You hate her very much, don't you? I hate hypocrites, Mr. Harmer. People with a superiority complex. Hey, Sister Mary be here? No, she is not. And you should know better than to come to this dispensary, filthy as you are. What do you want, Willie? Sister Mary is busy in the nursery. Uh, will you be kind then and tell her Willie has the letter with the smell of the lilac? Lilac? Uh, Mrs. Jeffries? I just said lilac. They're my favorite flower. Uh, they, they be smelling sweet on the letter. If Sister Mary lets me keep it. What are you talking about? Gibberish, as usual. Tell Sister Mary the letter Mr. Jason be looking for. Jason Carl? Aye. Don't you know that Mr. Jason's dead? Aye. He, he be proper dead. That's no way to talk, Willie. Really. Give the letter to me and I'll take it to her. I uh, don't have him. I be hiding it in my room. Mr. Harmer, I must go and lie down. I don't feel well. I'm so sorry, Mrs. Jeffrey. My husband... Please send for my husband. He's still in the ward, Mrs. Jeffrey. I'll find him. I'll go and lie down. Please tell him to hurry. We were all too occupied that morning for me to press the matter of Sister Mary's journey to Norwich. But it was something I could not ignore. Finally, I was able to summon them all to my office. Sergeant Melling, Dr. Jeffrey, Mr. Kingham, and Sister Mary. Now, first of all, madam, there's the matter of this report I've prepared, a simple declaration of facts concerning the deliberate destruction of the robo. Have you read this report, Sister Mary? No, Reverend Mother, but I'm certain it's accurate. I regret having to do this, but there's been an obstruction of justice. Oh, please don't worry, Sister Mary. I'm sure they'll forget all about it after Valley. Well, I mean, what, what, what I mean What do you mean to say is after she's been hanged? I'm sorry, Kingham. Regardless of official charges, sister, I wish you'd use better judgment. But, Reverend Mother, my heart went out to that poor girl. Has any real harm been done in letting her see this man? The fact remains she's a convicted murderess. I don't suppose I should say it. 
But Jason Carnes deserved what he got. Why shouldn't you say it? He just tormented and abused Valerie constantly. Oh, stop being so certain of her guilt. Both of you. Sister Mary. Now, look at the facts, sister. I prescribed tablets to let him sleep. Harmer made up a three-week supply the day my wife and I left for a holiday. Twenty-one tablets. Before I left, I cautioned Valerie to give Jason only one each night. No more. No matter how severe the pain. And four days later, Jason was found dead of an overdose. Yes, I know. After four days, how many tablets should there have been? Seventeen. And there were seventeen. But two of the remaining tablets were aspirin. Even so, that doesn't prove that Valerie put them there. But Jason couldn't reach the file. He was paralyzed. And even if he could, why should he want to replace the tablets with aspirin? It doesn't make sense. Sister, if Jason Carnes was paralyzed and Valerie Carnes was alone in the house with him... And I told you what she said to me at the time Willie overheard it. That she wished him dead. But you also told me that she really didn't mean it. Remember, Doctor? Yes, I had reason to feel that she didn't. When Jason had his second stroke, the one which left him paralyzed, if she hadn't sent for me in time, I... I think he would have died. So she could have let him die, but didn't. Yes, she could have, couldn't she? She saved him from dying a natural death and then turned around and poisoned him. I don't understand that kind of logic. Oh, it's conceivable that one can come to the end of one patient, you know? No, not Valerie. Only the day before Jason died, I begged her to send him to a nursing home so that she could be free to marry me. But she wouldn't hear of it. You couldn't say she'd come to the end of her patience, could you? Well, there's no sense in putting her on trial again. Nothing we can say can change a jury's verdict. Oh, please keep awake. It'll only break your heart. And now, if you don't mind, I should like to be alone with Sister Mary. Thank you for coming, gentlemen. Yes, thank you, Reverend Mother. Thank Would you mind closing the door? Yes, Reverend. Dr. Jeffries told me the Smithson's baby is a little better. We won't know much for a few hours yet. If the child survives, he says we'll have you to thank we have God to thank. How much better it would be, sister, if you confined all your efforts strictly to your duties. Oh, she's innocent, Reverend Mother. Never in all my life have I been filled with... with such complete conviction. Then you must renounce that conviction. You'll have no further contact with Miss Khan. You'll not speak to her again. But, Reverend Mother... This I... girl has prepared herself for death. It would be cruel to raise false hopes in her heart. That will be all. It was evening once again. As I walked to Vespers, I saw Valerie and Mr. Kingham in the garden. Watching closely was Mrs. Pierce. Valerie, please, you're only torturing us. But we know what's going to happen to me. Why not talk about it? Uh, all right. So you've left your will with your attorney. And uh, I want to change it, Sidney. I want to leave half of what I own to the sisters. I'll write it all down and you can take it to London. I'll do whatever you want me to do. And I want you to forget me. Darling, please, I won't listen to such talk. I want you to promise me, if you meet another girl, that you won't turn away. You mustn't think that if you fall in love again, you're betraying me. You're all I ever had. I'll never look for anyone else. Oh, but you must, you must. And above all, don't feel badly, because you can't believe that I'm innocent. Valerie, how can you say such a thing? Oh, you've tried so hard to hide it, darling. No, 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 it's not true. By this time tomorrow, I, I may be in Norwich. Don't lie to me now, Sidney, not even white lies. Sister Mary tell you this? No one told me. But if you didn't do it, there's only one other person who could have. Who else had a reason to kill Jason? But I didn't do it. And I didn't do it. No, well, nobody did it. Maybe it didn't happen. Maybe it's all a joke. Valerie. Jason's at home waiting for his dinner. We'd better go in, miss. It's getting serious. I don't want to go in. Oh, it's beautiful. The evening. The fresh air. I didn't do it, Sidney. I'm innocent and I'm young and I'm in love with you. I want to live. I want to be your wife. I don't want you to touch any other woman but me. I don't want to die. Darling, my darling. Miss Khan, Miss Khan. Mr. Mary? Something important has just come up. This letter. What is it? Sister? It was written to her brother, to Jason Khan. How did you get it? From Willie. Your brother accused him of stealing it. He punished Willie. Then later, when Willie found the letter, he decided to keep it. It was his childish way of satisfying his resentment. Do you recognize the writing, Miss Khan? No. It was obviously written by a woman. Mr. Kingham, please read it. Dearest Jason, I'm mortally afraid of getting in touch with you, and yet I must. We are suspected. I haven't been questioned, but I feel it. There is nothing either of us can do except to go on as if we'd never met. If you're asked, you must deny everything. Take care of yourself, and please, please get well. I'll never change. I couldn't if I wanted to. But, 
but no signature. Have you any idea who it could be? No. The envelope postmarked Norwich. But he, he knew women in London, but, but Norwich... But why didn't Willie produce this letter at the trial? He was afraid, and besides, he never read it. He kept it only because it smelled sweet. Are you sure your brother never spoke of anyone? No, no telephone calls, messages? Sister Mary, you are definitely warned not to come in contact with the prisoner. I know, Sergeant. I'm sorry. You have absolutely no right to continue to interfere. Pierce, take Miss Carnes to her room. From now on, no more personal favors and no visitors. Take her away. Give up, sister. It's too late. Come along, Miss. There's nothing more you can do. As for you, sister. Yes, Sergeant? I've reported you again to the Mother Superior. See her at once. Five. There's a thought for you to keep in mind, as many another American has. In 1945, Lyle Hayden was sent to Iran by a privately financed organization to help the farmers with their agricultural problems. At first, they were listless and disinterested. But Hayden started a small demonstration farm to show them what could be done. He began to drill for the water he was sure lay beneath the villages. And when he hit it, his second-hand pump began pumping 15,000 gallons an hour. Well, now the Iranians welcomed his help. With their aid, he purified the water, removed the threat of malaria from the irrigation ditches, started a successful chicken breeding program. Then he opened a free school to teach the children reading and writing. And it was so successful that the Iranian Minister of Education asked him to organize his teaching methods in other villages. Hayden offered a teaching job to any young villager who, who could learn to read and write. The successful ones came from his night school classes. As the months and years went by, Hayden continued educational and agricultural programs throughout the country. And today, what prosperity the peasant farmers of Iran enjoy can be attributed to the tireless work of Lyle Hayden, who combined the best qualities of missionary and businessman to win the thanks of a grateful people. Once again, an unselfish American proves that by helping others, you help your country. We pause now for station identification. Curtain rises on Act Three of Thunder on the Hill, starring Claudette Colbert as Sister Mary and Barbara Rush as Valerie Kahn. Yes, I sent again for Sister Mary, and for good reason. This latest interference was inexcusable. I cannot defend my actions, Reverend Mother, other than to explain. Explain, why. Sister. You openly disobey my orders. I felt I had to see Miss Carnes because of the letter. This letter suggests only that Jason Carnes had a secret romance. But doesn't it suggest that a third person is involved, Reverend Mother? A person who may have decided to take revenge. That's merely a guess. You've done nothing but harm this unfortunate young woman, raising false hopes, bringing her fiancé here, rekindling her passion and desire to live. All that I've done, I've done because I felt compelled to help her. Compelled, yes but not so much to help her as to prove once more that you're right. Oh, Reverend Mother, surely you don't think that this I... This stubborn, fanatic manner in which you cling to your opinion. I can't even call it an opinion. It's just a wild notion, a, an idea. It's not just an idea. Certainly this letter... You were convinced of her innocence long before you saw that letter. Admit that much. I do. I was convinced of it the first time I saw her. And every moment I've spent with her since has only strengthened my faith. Don't call it faith, sister. Call it by its proper name. A premonition, a wild notion. How can you be so stubborn? You keep blaming yourself for your sister's death, and yet you're doing the same thing all over again. Forcing your will on others, no matter at what cost. You're right, Reverend Mother. All my life I've had this relentless drive. That's why you feel yourself a failure. You keep trying to do too much. You forget there's a greater power who guides our lives, whose ways are not always our ways. Just as you believe you came here because the outside world had become empty and meaningless to you. It had. Quite meaningless. But you didn't come here, sister. You were led here by our Lord. Ah, oh, when will you accept that and bring peace to your heart? If I could only believe that God wants me here. Yes? Reverend Mother, it's Willie. Willie's been struck down. Willie? In his room in the bell tower, unconscious and a terrible wound in his head. Who could have done such a thing? You called Dr. Jeffrey? Yes. And the 
poor lad's belongings all strewn about as if someone had tried to rob him. Rob Willie? That doesn't make sense. Except for the letter. What is Willie to do with this letter? It goes back to when he worked for Jason Carr. He found it. He kept it. Oh, don't you see, Reverend Mother? Someone here in our house must have found out about it and tried to steal it. Nonsense. It probably was one of the villagers. They're all outraged with him for helping you to bring Mr. Kingham here. For destroying the boat. But if there's one child... I forbid you to go on with this. No more of this playing Scotland Yard. You have a hospital full of patients. They're your only concern, not this letter. There's the fireplace, Sister Mary. I want you to throw this letter into the fire. No, I can't. I beg you for the sake of your soul. I can't. I can't. Then I shall burn it. Oh. You can forget about the letter now. And try to forgive me. <laughs> Willie was badly hurt, but he'd recover. He had no idea who his assailant was. Dr. Jeffries left him and went to his quarters. His wife was lying down. She was very distraught. Did you get it, Edward? Get what, Isabel? My letter. The letter I told you about. But you didn't tell me about a letter, dear. I did. I did. The letter I wrote Jason. Oh, you've been sleeping, Isabel. You've had another one of your dreams. I hope you get over them. Edward, this wasn't a dream. How do you know? Because they heard Willie talk about the letter, too. Mr. Harmer, Nurse Philip. But what makes you so sure they weren't part of your dream? It wasn't a dream. Ask them, ask them. And let them know how ill you are. I've told you before, Isabel. I can help you only if you trust me. I don't think you'd like me to commit you to a nursing home. Edward, no. No, don't. It was a dream. A bad dream. Ah, yes, of course. Now, come. We'll have supper with Mr. Harmer. You'll feel better, dear, as soon as you've eaten. I made it especially for you. Shepherd pie and Yorkshire pudding. Especially for me, Sister Josephine. You make it sound like my last supper. Now, now, child. You mustn't even think about it. Haven't you heard the news? The telephone lines are being repaired. The flood water is running off. They'll probably come for me tomorrow. Please, eat your supper before it gets cold. There's something the chaplain reads at the last. I heard it once from a cell next to mine. I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. And he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And he that believeth in me shall never die. If you don't mind, sister, the orders are no visitors. Yes, Mrs. Skin. I'm leaving. Show me the path I must follow, dear Lord, for I'm lost. Grant me peace and forgive my sins and help me. Uh, who is it? Kingham, I must speak to you, Sister Mary. I'm sorry, Mr. Kingham. But it's terribly important. I need your help. The telephone's been fixed. Melling's already called the Norwich police. They're sending a launch. Then it's all over. I won't let them kill her. I'll get her out of here somehow. Oh, but that's impossible. Not if you help us. Look, if you could arrange for Mrs. Pierce to leave Valerie's room for, for just a few minutes. I can't do that. And you mustn't. You'll be caught. You know you will. And I'll do it without your help. You know nothing about it. But this. I do. Oh, this makes it clear how wrong I've been. I've done nothing but harm. Nothing but evil will come of it. You've lost your courage, sister. You know she's innocent. What about the letter, the attack on Willie? They don't prove anything. Not really. Oh, excuse me. I thought you were alone. I brought you more newspapers, sister. Some of them you haven't seen. Well, I've seen them. I've read them all over and over again. It's no use, sister. You might as well burn them. Indeed, I won't. Never burn a newspaper or throw away a piece of string. You must read them. You can't give up. Did you know, for instance... No. Oh, where was it? Oh, yes, here. Did you know that Jason Carnes was once arrested in London for assaulting a man he claimed insulted him? It has no bearing on his death, none at all. And did you know that Mr. Harmer, the chemist, has two key rings? Sister, please, what difference does it make? Well, I found the testimony very interesting. It's right here, sister. They asked Mr. Harmer, why do you keep two separate key rings? And Mr. Harmer said, in case one gets lost, 
They're identical keys. I remember every word he said. Identical keys in identical order and identical key rooms. Ah, there was more to it than that. Listen to this, sister. Do you recognize all the keys, Mr. Harma? Indeed I do. Well then, name them. The keys are as follows. House, car, garage, barn, shop, poison cabinet, storeroom. Wait a minute. Wait. There's something wrong here. Something wrong? Look at this newspaper. The counsel for the defense asked Mr. Harmer if he'll also name the keys on the second ring. Yes, I know. Harmer said it was ridiculous that the keys in each ring were identical. But the lawyer insisted, didn't he? And here's what Mr. Harmer says. House, car, garage, barn, poison cabinet, shop, storeroom. Mr. Harmer is a meticulous man. But don't you see? In naming the keys on the first ring, he said house, car, garage, barn, shop, poison cabinet, storeroom. And on the second... On the second, he said shop after poison cabinet. Well, now, what did I tell you? Never burn the newspaper. Sister. Sister, come with me, please. We've got to see Mr. Harmer. Except, sir, I never make mistakes. That's one of the few virtues I can boast of. In uh, all modesty, of course. But you've just read what the newspaper says. Your own testimony, Mr. Harmer. Well, I don't argue that, Sister Mary. I merely suggest that the mistake was not mine. The court clerk, perhaps, or the newspaper reporter. Then you're certain the order of the keys was the same on each ring? Well, now that's very easily confirmed. This is the key ring that I carry with me. And over here on the shelf is the set of duplicates. Good evening. I, oh, I hope I'm not disturbing anything. Not at all, Dr. Jeffries. Doctor, how's Willie? Oh, uh, he'll be all right, I think. I was on my rock to see him now. I just remembered I hadn't given my wife a sedative. Anything I can do for you, Mr. Harmer? Oh, no, no, Doctor. Just a little mess about my key ring. Well, good night, sir. Now then, here are my two key rings. They were both impounded by the court. I got them back. I never thought to look. I suppose we do so now. Each ring has seven keys. Correct. And each key... My two. My two... Oh, this is ridiculous. Ridiculous? Well, uh, what I mean, dear me, you are right. They're not in the proper order at all. Someone took the key to the poison cabinet and put it back on the ring in the wrong place. But, but who could have done it? Who? I'm sure I don't know, Mr. Kingdom. My apprentice, perhaps, or, or Willie. Who else, Mr. Harmer? Well, well, any of my professional clientele for that matter, the doctors, the visiting nurses of the district, they all have the run of this dispensary. Fine, Sergeant Melling, Mr. Harmer. You must tell him at once. Of course, of course, at once. <laughs> Isabel, please. How can I help you if you keep resisting me? Edward, no. No, I've had my sedative. I don't want another. But this is only half a grain, darling. Then you'll be sure to sleep. No, Edward, don't. I don't want another. Edward! Edward! Sister Mary had not gone with Mr. Kingham and Mr. Harmer in search of Sergeant Melling. She remained in the dispensary. Now in her hand was a tiny box. Dr. Jeffries had dropped it in the waste basket when he left the dispensary a few moments ago. The box had contained a powerful sedative. Please, please, Edward, no more. It's Sister Mary, Mrs. Jeffries. You've got to get out of bed. You've got to keep moving. You'll be all right if you keep awake. Edward, sedative. Mrs. Jeffries, you knew Jason Kahn. I'm not allowed to say. Oh, you must tell me. You can save an innocent life. Now lean on me and just keep walking. Where are you taking me? We must find Sergeant Millen. You don't want Valerie Collins to die. Poor oh, Valerie. He loved Jason, too. If only he'd lived, I wouldn't be here. You loved him. You wrote that letter because your husband had found out. Yes, I loved him. He wanted me to take me away from... No, 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 no we mustn't stop. Please, Mrs. Jeffries, try to stay awake. We must tell Sergeant Melling. No, no, I don't want to. Please, hold on to me. We must get out of here. Now, think hard, Mrs. Jeffries. Don't let yourself go. We, we were to meet in London. Take the boat from Southampton. Keep walking, Mrs. Jeffries. It's not much farther. In Victoria Station, the luggage office. There's a suitcase full of things he bought for me. Isabel. Edward. You killed Jason. You killed him. Go back to your room, Isabel. You killed him because I loved him. You hated him and he had to die. Isabel, go back to your room. Uh, I'll help her. She can go back by herself. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. Oh, why, Doctor? Jason Collins was a hopeless cripple doomed to die. No. No, he was going to get well. Isabel was going to go away with him. Well, there's only one thing to do. 
We must tell Sergeant Melling the truth. Yes, you're right. There's no way to escape. I'm tired. Where are you going, Doctor? He's downstairs. No, I saw him just a moment ago. He's gone up to the bell tower. Bell tower? He went up to watch for the police launch. You don't have to come. You're a sick man, Dr. Jeffrey. Have you just found it out? I've known it for a long time. My love for Isabel is a sickness. An incurable one. And you would have let Valerie die. I placed the two aspirins in the file to divert suspicion from myself. It happened to fall on her. As you can see, I'd stop at nothing to keep Isabel. Why couldn't you have left things alone, sister? Why did you have to interfere? Where's Sergeant Mellon? Where? Oh, let me go down. Let me go down, Doctor. He'll never go down, sister. No, no. Oh, it's quite quiet up here. No. Just the wind. So you no one can hear us. No, you wouldn't. They'll know. No. No one will ever know. But they'll find out. You came up here to be alone. You were severely reprimanded by Mother Superior. You were in great distress. It was dark. You couldn't see the rail. You can't. And you fell. Dr. Jeffrey, try to think. It, it, it's not just the law you have to answer to. There's a higher authority you must face someday. I know what I'm doing, and I'll bear my punishment when the time comes, if I have to. I'm sorry about you and Valerie. Why are you so afraid of death? Why don't you pray? Maybe your higher authority will hear you. Have mercy. I beg you, have mercy. The rail, sister. Let go of that rope. Let go of that rope. It was Willie who first heard the bell and saved her. Willie, whose room was near the tower, and who, in spite of his wound, overpowered the unfortunate doctor. He fell, Reverend Mother. Fell to the stone below. I, I had no thought to hurt him, only to help Sister Mary. God forgives you, Willie. You have the gratitude of us all. Uh, I be better by morning. I'll be lighting the fires like always, come five o'clock. Sister Mary... Reverend Mother, I, I disobeyed you again. Yes. Thank God you did. You've shown great ingenuity and courage. I'm sorry to have made it so difficult for you. Thank you. I don't deserve your praise. It's Sister Josephine who really saved Miss Khan. Me? She insisted on my reading the newspapers after I'd given up hope. Sure, I only insisted because I happened to see Miss Khan unafraid, praying to Almighty God. Now I know, Reverend Mother... We were chosen by him. Yes. I think you found the answer, sister. To be right is a heavenly gift that's wasted unless it's wrapped in meekness and grace. Dio gratia. Dio gratia. In a moment, our stars will return. At ten minutes after two, on the afternoon of August 5th, 1949, the country of Ecuador suffered one of the most disastrous earthquakes of the present century. The dead numbered from six to eight thousand. Twenty thousand or more were injured, and a hundred thousand were made homeless. Fifty-three towns were destroyed or badly damaged. But from United States Army installations in Panama came immediate aid. Military planes shuttled back and forth with emergency supplies, food, medicine, clothing and especially tents for the homeless. Besides material things, doctors, nurses, and engineers volunteered from far and near to give their own hands in the work of saving lives. The warm-heartedness of these angels in uniform is remembered in Ecuador as a bright light in its darkest hour. Such acts as these, by you and your friends today, are shaping our world of tomorrow. And now, Mr. Cummings, with our stars. And here they are, coming forward for a well-deserved curtain call. Claudette Colbert and Barbara Rush. How about your show next week, Irving? Next week, we are again fortunate in having an outstanding screen personality. An actress who has proved herself expert in both comedy and drama. Lovely Ginger Rogers. And for next Monday night, we thought you might like to hear Miss Rogers starring in a delightful comedy role. That of a housewife suddenly possessed of all the money she needs. Because she discovers it grows on trees. I'm sure you'll agree that the theme of this gay universal international picture 
will appeal to everyone. Well, it certainly will, Mr. Cummings. Good night. Good night. Good night, and hurry back. Third in our cast tonight were Norma Varden as Mother Superior, Leo Britt as Dr. Jeffries, Paul Priest as Willie, Mary Flynn as Isabel, Herb Butterfield as Mr. Harmer, Otto Smith as Sister Josephine, Dan O'Herlihy as Sidney, Joseph Kearns as Melling, Jean Wood as Nurse Phillips, Lois Corbett as Pierce, and Yvonne Patey as Sister Agatha. Hollywood Radio Theater is produced by Mr. Irving Cummings, our orchestra directed by Rudy Schrager. This is Ken Carpenter inviting you to be with us again next week for another worldwide presentation of the Hollywood Radio Theater, brought to you through the facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.